Let me start this video with a story. I went home a few weeks ago for an overnight stay, so I called my mom to tell her I was coming. The first thing she did was ask me what I wanted for dinner. Because I was full at the time, I wasn't really dreaming of anything in particular, so I just told her to make whatever she wanted, thinking she would pick something I usually ask for. The next night, I arrived home, excited for some delicious cooking, to find spinach pasta with ricotta cheese topping. It actually wasn't bad, but usually my welcome home dinner consists of chicken and potatoes or manicotti, something of that nature. Let's just say my dad loves it when my brother and I come home from college because my mom doesn't test all of her new recipes on us while we're there. I tell you this story to illustrate the fact that I come from a short line of enthusiastic cooks. My grandmother cooked every single night because that's what they did back in the day and she liked to do it. My mother picked this up from her so almost every day we were home in my growing up years we had a home cooked meal. While my grandmother wasn't much of an adventurous type, my mother sure is. She's a fantastic cook. She also loves to try out new recipes and use us as her guinea pigs. When I was little, we only had one rule, and it was that we had to at least try whatever was on our plate. If we didn't like it, we could be released to find something else. My dad pretty much loves anything she makes, but my mom knew it was virtually impossible to please my brother and I all the time, so her strategy for a new recipe was to make rolls. She still uses her mother's recipe for when she was growing up, and not that I'm biased, but she makes some pretty delicious rolls. This is a picture of the recipe book, which falls open to the page with the roll recipe because it's always been the most important. Like all well-loved recipes, the page is marked with cooking stains, which makes it easy to find. The recipe itself isn't much like Miss Rebecca's bread recipe. We haven't modified it since my grandmother used it, other than substituting butter for shortening. It consists of eight ingredients, one of which is packaged yeast, which isn't Michael Pollan approved, but it's easy to make on a weeknight. My mom's famous saying is that if there's bread, nobody will starve tonight. It was always a treat knowing that even if we had kale and quinoa, or my personal least favorite, beef stroganoff with egg noodles for dinner, at least we would have fresh rolls. My mother has been making these for years, but I just learned how to make them a couple of weeks ago. My mom has it down to a science. They've been made so many times that she pretty much just throws everything into the bread maker and lets it work its magic. However, I want it to be authentic, so I learned the old-fashioned way. My grandma made these rolls for a long time until she finally got tired of it taking forever and bought a bread maker. It makes a huge difference in how long it takes to make them, and the bread comes out the exact same. She was the one who bought my mom her first bread maker. My mom cooks so much that she gets personally attached to her kitchen appliances to the point where she keeps replacing parts on our 20 year old oven so she doesn't have to find another one. She had the bread maker my grandma got her for years until it finally gave out and we were forced to get a new one. I wanted to learn the old fashioned way because I thought it would give me a better idea of how the recipe was originally intended to be made when it was written, but it's a lot more practical to let the machine do the work. First, the recipe says to scald the milk, which was more important back in my grandmother's day when milk wasn't as safe. We aren't as careful about that now. It then says to add butter and salt to the milk and let it cool. After that, you sprinkle the yeast into warm water and stir it to dissolve. Then, the flour, eggs, and yeast are beaten into the milk mixture. Once all the ingredients are combined, the dough has to be kneaded until it is no longer sticky. It was about this time that I realized that I have no upper body strength. It takes about 5-8 to eight minutes to get the dough to where it won't stick to everything and I was definitely tired by the end of that. After the dough is smooth and satiny, it needs to be put into a covered bowl to rise for an hour or so until it doubles in size. At this point, I section it off into roll shapes and put them on top of the warm oven to rise for 30-45 to 45 minutes until they were doubled. The rolls can then be baked for 12 to 15 minutes. Overall, the whole process was a little more involved than I remembered it being. My mom has done it so many times that she makes it look like it's no big deal. When I tried, it took me about 4 hours from start to finish and most of that was just sitting around waiting for the dough to rise. When my mom does it, it takes her about an hour and a half. Some of my best conversations with my mom have happened while she was cooking in the kitchen and I was watching her work. Even though my mom loves to try new things and experiment with crazy recipes, we always come back to my grandmother's roll recipe. I think it reminds her of her mother, and it definitely reminds me of her. 
It's simple, delicious, and something I've never found anywhere else but home.